A resourceful squad of Dwergarian salvages scour an abandoned Imperial bunker on the edge of reality. But as a warp storm casts forth mysterious beings from an unknown realm, a lethal firefight erupts. Can the Hothkin forces terminate this threat? Or will their enigmatic enemies reduce them to dust? Find out here on Mountainside Tabletop. up y'all we're back and i finally got my hearthkin salvagers on the channel finally finished them got my dwergari and dwarf paint scheme uh leave a comment if you like my purple space dwarves i like them yeah so i hope you like them um okay there's a lot of choice when it comes to operative selection on this team there's 14 possible choices and only 10 slots and Pretty much everyone has its use. It's not an easy decision. So I went with this loadout. I didn't take the locator, but I did decide to take the high las rotor cannon that denies obscuring. So I do have some obscuring denial. And also I did decide to take the dozer. I know that's maybe a controversial pick, but you know, he strikes on death in a combat. And I think if I get a charge off, I have a good chance of one shotting a space marine and he looks cool. So yeah. I think, you know, that alone is enough reason to pick him. Um, for equipment, I have 15 EP to work with because I did take the lugger. So, okay, I took one use of the excavation equipment to make one of my barricades traversable. I took the invuln save aura on my leader, and then I gave uh, climbing ropes to all my gunners plus the grenadier. And then I handed out a few plasma knives just to round out my points here. Um, and help out just in case I get locked up in combat with some of my plebs. So, uh, as we all kind of know, there's a lot to worry about with this team. They do really, really well into elites. Uh, they've got three up saves, which are always kind of a pain. I don't have a ton of AP to deal with that. Um, but I think my biggest fear is the leader. Overall, they're a great operative that's certainly capable of dealing some damage, but all of the like grudge token shenanigans means like my guys are just gonna be like just dealing with so many auto retained crits unlike intercession they mostly just have 12 wounds so it's like gonna be yeah. pretty easy to chew through and that does worry me plus i've got to deal with the melee threats and i've got to deal with the gunners uh so basically if i just kill everyone and leave like your comms guy i'll be okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, uh, believe it or not, that is my Strike Force Justian team. Uh, I didn't buy the blind box, and I have a lot of Stormcast parts just kicking around because I've bought a few Dominion boxes <laughs> since it's come out. Uh, and I thought this would be a great way to use them, and I'm very, very happy with how they turned out. I think uh, it all kind of worked. Had to sacrifice a bunch of gray plastic to do it, but uh, yeah, I think everything is a uh, WYSIWYG, and you know, I think it's cool. They look definitely super cool. Thanks. So as for my loadout, uh, I've decided to not take the one bolter that has ceaseless and take the one with P1 instead. And then the sergeant is my leader, not my captain. And then those are really my only options. Everything else is just uh, as is. For equipment, uh, it, this really is my favorite thing about this team. I selected no equipment and have no access to equipment, which is great because there's nothing I hate more than forgetting to use my equipment and this just mm -hmm. takes it out of my hands. Obviously a few of my units have like grenades and smokes and stuff built in, but uh, nothing to worry about. I do have one thing to worry about. I'm pretty worried about the sniper. So all the other operatives, like, yeah, they're scary in their own ways, but they're either gonna have to expose themselves to get on a point or either expose themselves to shoot or only get one shot off and then be hiding way in the back. The sniper though has the ability to shoot from conceal because it has silent on all its gun profiles and it has uh, an option to ignore obscuring. So, you know, my cheese with my one gun that also ignores obscuring, he's just gonna get cheesed right back from the sniper. Yeah, the double and, cheese is you a You know, real if problem. you get in a good sniper's nest spot, it's going to be really hard for me to like run all the way to the back because I'm slow and get behind you and flank you so that I can actually get a shot off. So I think 
The sniper's gotta be priority number one. For today's game, we're playing on an open board. We've pulled the approach deployment and the mission is secure. We roll off for attacker defender, Vic wins and he chooses to be the defender. Uh, so I'm gonna choose this side just cause I really don't want Brad to put a gunner up in this antenna. Guess that makes sense. You yeah, hate that antenna. I do, huh? I really do. In the scouting step, we both go for the recon dash and I'm gonna give initiative to Vic turning point one. Also in the pregame here, I did spend one CP on Rampart to make this barricade heavy. And I also used my equipment to make it traversable for me. So uh, yeah, that's one OP barricade. It's a bit of a mind bending combination of yeah. heavy and traversable. Well, I'm short. Yeah. It kind of makes sense. <laughs> to start off turning point one, I'm gonna put a grudge token on Vic Sniper. Neither of us play any strategic ploys, but I'll wrap up the strategic phase by placing my attack token in Vic's deployment zone. For tack off reveals, I'm gonna reveal C's ground on my heavy barricade. Everybody knows That's this, such but uh, yeah, <laughs> obviously I did this. Nobody reveals anything else, and we get right into it. With the first activation of the game, I'm going to use this uh, normal intercessor that's just kind of sitting in the middle of nowhere. Uh, move, dash, and secure this objective. My high las rotor cannon is going to dash, and then because this gun ignores obscuring, I'm just going to shoot Vic Sergeant way in the back here. I'm hitting on fours. I do have ceaseless, but I didn't roll any ones. So this is kind of a crappy roll. I do get one reroll at least from my Cognitar's uh, attack token, but it's a whiff. And then Vic saves everything. So that attack does nothing. I'm gonna activate my assault intercessor now, uh, move over the wall and then dash behind the barricade. Okay, my Grenadier is gonna secure this objective and then move up. My sniper will activate now and they're gonna dash and then use their optics to make Brad's gunner no longer obscured and then take a shot. I'm gonna spend a CP here hoping for a crit. I don't get it, but I still get the kill. Yeah, that's unfortunate, but this sniper now has two grudge tokens on it. So I'm not feeling too bad. Uh, but for now, my dozer's just gonna move and dash. My captain's gonna activate move towards this objective, secure it, and then dash into cover. My leader's gonna move up now and hide behind this dank, heavy barricade. Gotta love it. So this might seem crazy, but I do actually like where my sergeant is right now. And even though I don't have any good shots, there's a potential for maybe some overwatch if Brad's an idiot, so I'm just gonna pass. All right, my kin link is going to buff the APL of the jump pack warrior and then just move over a bit. My heavy gunner is just gonna move out a bit to start eyeing down this uh, alleyway here. Okay, my lugger now is just gonna move and dash up. And then I'll secure this objective cause he can do mission actions for one less AP. And then Vic's out of guys, so I'm not gonna give him any overwatch. I'll move a bit with my railgun gunner. And then my plasma gunner. And my cognitar. And then the last activation of the turning point, uh, my jump pack warrior is gonna boost for two AP. So he'll fly all the way onto this forward objective. And then since his APL was buffed, he still has one more, he'll secure the point. All right, Vic, so at the end of turning point one, I've scored three for primaries and you've only scored two. Yep, <laughs> that's right. I mean, I'm not too worried about it. I think my team is very much built to kind of come out at the beginning of turn two and really remove a bunch of bodies. So. Um... I'm actually happy to be within one at this point. At the top of turning point two, we face a massive initiative roll and unfortunately Brad wins. In the strategic phase, he's gonna put a grudge token on my captain and then I'm going to play tactical doctrine for some sweet rerolls. And then Brad's gonna move his attack token towards where my captain is and then play proximate firepower. In target reveal, I'm gonna reveal route and eliminate guards on his jump pack guy. And then Brad's going to reveal settle grudges and hold them back. Yeah, okay, I really wanna get the sniper off the board. I think he's just too dangerous to be left alive. So I'm gonna go with my Magna Rifle Gunner. I'm gonna move and dash and then spend a CP on Ancestors Are Watching. 
So I'm gonna get a free shoot with this gun. It has unweirdly, so normally it would cost two AP to shoot with it, but now it's free. So basically I just had a four APL activation. I'm within six inches, so I'm hitting on threes. Not an awesome roll. Uh, I'll get a free reroll here from my Cognitar's attack token. Still not amazing. I will spend one more CP on another reroll. That guarantees the kill. So Vic, there's no point in you rolling saves. Your sniper is dead. That's too bad, but uh, I am going to take the chance to use Wrath of Vengeance here yeah. and take a shot back at the gunner. I get a great roll, get the kill. So yes, I lost my sniper, but he did kill two gunners on his way out. If everyone kills two guys before they die, I really like my chances. I'm gonna activate my captain now and charge and fight this uh, jump pack guy. Brad gets a pretty awful roll here, which is great because I'm just able to parry his one hit and then kill him without taking any damage. And then I'm gonna use my last action to shoot the dozer with my plasma pistol. He has an invuln save, so there's no point in overcharging, but doesn't matter and I get the kill either way. That's gonna score me victory points for both route and eliminate guards. Yeah, that hurts a lot. Like, yeah, I'm probably gonna kill your captain this turn, but I thought at least maybe I'd get one hit in from yeah. my jump pack guy, deal five damage to you and soften you up. All right, well, I'm gonna, yeah, try and kill you, I guess. So my grenadier's gonna go and I'm just gonna chuck my big grenade right at your captain. That's three crits through right now, but Victor rolls an absolutely insane defense roll. Yeah, he plays transhuman on top of that to upgrade to three crits and saves literally everything. That is disgusting. Then I have one APL left. Uh, I'll just throw down the slowing mine thing. Uh, I don't know if this is gonna really help me out, but I may as well do something. So now my entire plan really kind of hinges on this next activation. So I'm going to activate my Assault Intercessor and I'm going to charge and fight the Lugger. I get the kill, um, and unfortunately I do take 5 damage from the Plasma Knife. Then I'm going to shoot the Plasma Gunner with my Bolt Pistol. I'm going to spend a CP here to reroll because I really, really need this kill to go through. And it just doesn't happen. I only do three damage here. It's pretty disappointing. If I was able to bring both of these guys down, I basically would have had total domination on this side of the board, and that would have been a great thing to have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my Cognitar is gonna go now. I'm gonna move my attack token near Victor's captain. You know, I thought I wouldn't need it, but apparently I do need it. <laughs> uh, so yeah, I'll move it there, and then I will shoot the captain with the Cognitar. Vic does spend a CP here on a reroll for his defense saves, and after everything, four damage goes through. My heavy gunner is gonna dash a little bit here and then take a shot at Brad's Grenadier. I can't believe that with all those attacks I only got four damage through, but thankfully he can shoot twice, and this time does even less, so only four damage through after two attacks. My Kinlink's gonna go now. I really gotta, you know, keep chipping away at this captain, so I'm gonna move slightly to get within six inches of the captain, and then shoot hitting on threes. I mean, crits are good, that's eight damage through, you're down to three HP left. Yeah, he's getting there. I'm gonna activate my sergeant next, and she's gonna move and shoot the grenadier. So this is now my third and fourth attack on the grenadier. And uh, finally, after spending a CP, I do get the kill after some uh, lucky crits there. Uh, my leader's gonna go. I'm pretty sure I can finish off the captain here, so I'm gonna shoot. That's four crits, easy kill. Finally, that captain is gone, but yeah. you took a lot of firepower. Yeah. Uh, that's gonna score me a point for settled grudges because that's the second operative I've killed that has grudge tokens on them. And then I'll just move to safety and uh, chill because I'm obscured. So my Intercessor is the last one to activate on my team, and uh, unfortunately that slow down mine is in a very, very good spot. Uh, my plan was to kind of swing over and secure another objective, but I just don't have the movement to make it there anymore. So I'm going to have to move a different direction and then take a shot at the Cognitar. The first shot's a big whiff, uh, then fortunately with my second shot I'm able to get the kill. Alright, one guy left to go, my Plasma Beamer. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna move, so I'll later be obscured from the sergeant and the heavy gunner. And then I'm gonna shoot the assault intercessor. Not an awesome roll, but good enough. I get the kill. 
This will score me my second point for Settle Grudges. And then because I got a crit, I'll deal one damage to the Heavy Gunner and three damage to the Sergeant in Mortal Wounds. And that's the end of Turning Point 2. So the score is up eight to six, still in favor of the Hearthkin. What a bizarre turning point. So at first, yeah. I thought I was screwed, right? Like, yeah, I got the sniper at the cost of my best gun, which I was okay with, but then your captain got a double kill and then my grenadier's best bomb did nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny, you know, like like I said, I thought I was screwed at the beginning of this turning point, but by the end of the turning point, I'm like, well, maybe I'm okay. Yeah. Because, you know, you whiffed a lot of shots too. Yeah, it, I can't believe how hard it is to kill these damn dwarves. <laughs> it's like so many guys have just uh, kind of bounced off of them. Yeah, I mean, you know, three up saves with some invuln aura and extra heavy cover. Like, not bad. Yeah, for sure. In the top of turning point three, we roll off and Brad gets initiative. In the strategic phase, he's going to put two grudge tokens on my intercessor, and I'm going to play Devastator Doctrine. In target reveal, all that's left for me to do is nominate Brad's comms for my eliminate guards. Well, I definitely want to get some more bang out of my plasma gunner before he loses his buck. <laughs> Does that make sense? Not really. <laughs> Not really. Uh, so I'm going to move and dash and then pay for Ancestors Are Watching again to shoot Vic's intercessor over on the other side of the board. With grudge tokens, that's three crits, and you're dead. Unsurprisingly, Vic does use Wrath of Vengeance here. He shoots my kin link, but he rolls badly, and I roll pretty well, and I take no damage. So things have gone uh, from bad to worse here uh, on my side of the table, but I'm going to activate my heavy gunner and take a shot at the kin link. First roll, once again, only does four damage. And with the second roll, not a great attack and Brad saves it all. Then I'm just gonna dash up the board in case I have a chance to do something later. I'm just playing for points now, so my kin link is gonna switch to conceal and pass. I think it's pretty clear what my remaining tack op is. So my sergeant is just gonna go all out, climb up this tower so that Brad's no longer obscured because of the Morok rules, and then take a shot. Uh, so the bad news here is that Brad saved everything and I'm like basically out of play at this point. But the good news is that we have this sick new backdrop. Patrons are really helping us upgrade our shtick around here, our, our setup. We used to be sitting in front of black nothingness. Now we got these sick lights. Uh, yeah, this is great. I mean, all the support from the patrons really helps us not only keep making these battle reports, but keep improving them and investing into the setup and throwing dank raves in Brad's basement. One HP gangsters and mountain goats up on the screen. I think that's it. Yeah, I, I think know. that's great. Thanks so much. We're going to keep yeah, making we stuff appreciate better. It. And you're the best. Back to the game. Yes, my thank you. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Get a wrap up turning point three. I'll go with my leader. I may as well just do a pot shot here, so I'm gonna shoot at Vic's heavy gunner. But everything's saved, no damage through, and then I'll just move into safety. And at the end of turning point three, I'm gonna score one point for hold them back, because none of Vic's guys are wholly within my half of the board. And uh, that puts the score at 12 to eight. <laughs> it's gone from bad to worse for me. It, there's been times in this game where I was 100% sure that I was going to win. <laughs> and then like, you know, a few whiffs or, you know, you've got a couple good kills and scored some good points. And all of a sudden the math is very difficult. But uh, that's part of playing an elite team is if you lose a key piece or if one of your pieces doesn't do what you need them to do, uh, there's not a lot of wiggle room there. Speaking of wiggling... If you like the mat we're playing on, you can wiggle your way over to skirmishmats.com. We got an affiliate link in the description, and if you've been trying to buy a mat from them in the past few months and you've noticed that their website isn't taking orders, well, they're back up and running again. They're taking orders, so uh, you can hop over there and pick up your Desolate Dunes mat, and it gives us some money and it gives you a sick mat. Thank you. Okay, turning point four, Vic wins the initiative roll, and then he targets my Plasma Gunner for Eliminate Guards. So my first activation is my Sergeant, who's gonna take a shot at Brad's Plasma Gunner. Brad saves pretty well here, so only three damage goes through, and then I'm gonna attack again, and 
Luckily, Brad takes another three and is dead. Unfortunately, then Brad plays this really sneaky tactical ploy and is able to secure the objective before I get a chance to go over there, which uh, that sucks. Yeah, I'm just playing for points. My leader is just gonna move up and conceal by this heavy barricade and get ready to score seize ground at the end of the game. Yeah, my heavy gunner is just gonna move, dash, and uh, steal one last objective. Not that uh, it's really gonna do much. And to round things off, my Kinlink is last. He's just gonna move up and conceal by this heavy barricade as well and uh, get ready to score. At the end of the turning point, I unfortunately don't score my last point from uh, hold them back. But at the end of the game here, the final score is 17 to 12 and Hearthkin salvagers managed to salvage this game somehow. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're a team that plays into elites really well and now I'm starting to understand why but I don't feel like that game was out of reach at all. I feel like that could have gone either way. Not nah, yeah, like if you had um, like not whiffed so hard with some of those shots and yeah. killed an extra body or two, like I, I couldn't have scored. I, yeah, my whole plan was to kind of let you get a lead and then kill everyone and take it back, but then it was the, the crucial step two of killing everyone is where it kind of fell well, yeah, apart. Yeah, my plan was to honestly start off by just staying even with you, yeah. but I was lucky to be a point ahead and then I just turtled. Yeah and then scored my cheesy tack up with my heavy barricade. <laughs> that was a pretty cheesy tack up, but even if you scored zero from that, you still would have won. So, yeah. you know, not that cheesy. But uh, yeah, good game. Really happy to get my uh, Stormcast Justian on the table and, uh, you know, looking forward to more. Looking yeah. forward to Nightmare. Yeah, Nightmare's coming soon. We'll be back soon with some Mandrakes and uh, Nemesis Claw on the channel. Nice. So be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. See you next time. I'm going to go have lunch. Yeah, nice. Me Bye. too. Bye. <laughs>